Okay, so uh, this in this video we'll be talking about advection dispersion equation. Uh, this is the first time we actually were not talking about chemistry, but talking about the physical processes. So what we have thinking about this is, let's say you have a chemicals that are non-reactive, right? So the system you have, what we use that as example is a column. So think about, for example, you have you are doing an experiment. Uh, you pack up a column and all these uh, column with like sand, grains, um, and then you inject a chemical, let's say bromide, um, to the left, from the left into the right. So essentially you would have these chemical species you inject for, for a short period of time. You can imagine this, this chemical will be moving along with the flow, right? So over time it will be eventually moving out of system with certain velocity, so V is the velocity here. And you're talking about here, for example, the length of this column is L. So we want to know, as you can imagine, the concentration of this chemical will change with time and with space, right? Um, depends on what time you're looking at the snapshot, this, this chemical species might be here, might be here, and other places there's no uh, this chemical species because we, we consider maybe, for example, we start with the clean water. Um, so how do we solve, or how do we mathematically solve this kind of equation and get a solution so we know the concentration of this chemical uh, species in different time and the different time uh, and and different locations, and this is what we are going to talk about, which is a vacuum dispersion equation. We call it ADE without a reaction term. So ADE, um, when we think about, I'm not going to derive uh, in detail of, of how is where is this equation coming from. Uh, in general, these equations are coming from these mass uh, conservation principles. So if we look at this terms, uh, different terms of the ADE. The first term we called the mass accumulation term. And it should have the units of accumulation, like mass per time. It's how fast Things are changing, right? So, and this C is the concentration of the chemical species in the water phase. So C here is concentration of this, let's call it a tracer in water. So everything we're solving is for how much they have in the water, because that's what we really care about. And this should have the units of, for example, mass per volume. So the first term is mass accumulation. Second term here, we call the vacuum transport. This is a process where the chemical kind of almost like you think about swimming. Uh, the chemical is a chase essentially flow together with the water at the same speed as a, the as a water flow. So that's called a, a divective transport. And the last term is a dispersive transport term. It's somewhat similar to diffusion process. It's driven by First of all, concentration gradient, but also uh, in this type of pulse media that you have grains, they tend to have different grain size, different pore, like different size of pore space. There's some spatial heterogeneity that leads to uh, different flow velocity, mixing processes that leads to the concentration difference in, uh, in different places. So these are the three major terms in this, in this uh, equation. And for phi, so if this phi is we call porosity, is how much space you have, how much pore space you have in a given volume. So the, 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 the pulse media has both pore space and solid space, right? So this is how much pore space in terms of percentage, right, per unit of total volume. This V is velocity, flow velocity. It's 
uh, the linear velocity in the pore space. So it's different from uh, the U, we usually call Darcy velocity. And the relationship between the two, um, typically we know that velocity. We know that U would be equal to phi plus A times the linear velocity, right? So that's the relationship between the two. And this DH, DH is a very important term for this dispersive transport. This will be equals to, I talk about it could be coming both from diffusion and uh, di the mechanical dispersion in pulse media. So we have this kind of uh, two terms adding together. This is coming from diffusion in what, in, in pulse media. Diffusion coefficient pulse media. And then the second term is, is essentially taking into account the, the mechanical dis dispersion. And you can think about alpha is, um, we call it dispersivity, which is a parameter describe how fast mechanical dispersion happens. And it's related to velocity. So the whole term is also related to the velocity. So the fast, um, the flow, you actually have larger term of this. So we have this equation, all the terms are here. And usually when we solve this, this equation, there's an analytical solution for this equation um, if you give the right initial bundle condition. We, when we numerical solving this, we will be discretizing them, this equation time and space, and then you get a solution for that. But before we do that, typically we will need um, Two conditions, right? Is this the first time we introduce the space dimension x here? Like in before, when in the mineral dissolution precipitation lesson, we actually introduce the time. So you notice here that this equation we 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 call this is a partial differential equation, meaning it has two independent variables. One is the time, the other is space. So this is the first time we introduce the space uh, dimension here. Now, in order to solve this equation, we need to know, um, like, at t equal to zero, what are the concentrations, right? So this is initial condition. When t equal to zero, what are the concentrations? Now, usually this is given, right? It's given for a uh, given system. And we also need to know at the two boundaries, x equal to zero, x equal to l, what are the conditions that is specified? Is it, for example, a no-flow boundary or pure advective or pure dis dispersive or These are different type of boundary conditions you can specify. But anyway, you, you, you will need to, it both initial condition and boundary conditions to solve this. And different type of condition will give you uh, different solutions. Because it's, it's, it matters what is your, uh, what is the country in the, in the t equal to zero. If you already start with something high, you will see a, a, a different contribution versus, for example, at t equal to zero, you, you, you have um, clean water. Okay, so in terms of solution, let's assume we have done all this work to solve the equation. What do we expect to see after we solve this equation? So I'm, I'm talking about a system I will be using an example system, so you will be injecting a kind of a, a short pulse of the, this chemical bromide into a system. So if you conceptually you think about it, right, uh, at t equal to zero is, is somewhere here. Let's say every way it started with clean water, right? So you will have at some point here, let's say you have, you have kind of a little bit smeared, right, at early time, and with, with time goes on, you will have more and more smeared, but going in the direction of flow and moving along and be maybe become more 
but it should be the 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 so total mass will be remain the same, but at the end it you will see kind of a, a wider and wider over time and over longer distance, right? So this is um, conceptual how you would think about this solution you expect to see. Now when we when we think about from mathematical term, what's the Let's draw this. When after we solve it, let's say we look at the concentration of the function of distance. And what do you expect to see at different time? So first of all, let's say at initial time, you probably would uh, see something like this. In here, the, you, you see a pulse of this chemical, right? So this. This is T at about zero, maybe a little bit um, uh, past zero, right? But you think about, okay, over time, this, is, this pulse will be moved along, and then you should see different uh, distributions, right? So this would be, let's say, at T equal to V times um, some small concentration T you will see at another place, right? But if this will be kind of become a little bit wider, smeared out. This is T1. And over time, let's say you're going further distance. This become like more and more smooth. I'm not drawing accurately. This mass total mass will remain the same, but I don't think I'm drawing uh, nicely in terms of the mass conservation. But in any case, you will see over time total mass will remain the same, but then the center of this will move along. Right. So the v, the the speed of this plume, how far how fast it will move over a certain time will be determined by. So speed, V is determine the speed of the center or the rate of the center moving to downstream, right? But also another case would be, we know there's this DH, which is a very important parameter as well. So if you think about um, two different situations, one is, let's say they, they both have the same V, but they would have dif different DH values. Let's say we have a, another um, case with much higher DH, you will probably see something like this. A, a wider distribution, still the same total mass, but it's much more spread. So this would be, this is, would be rep representing a large, I'm sorry, a small, Small DH. The blue one would be representing a much larger DH. The larger the DH, it will be uh, more spread. So essentially, you can think about the DH will be determining the, the width of the plume. So this is T1, T2. And over time, for example, as there's a T3, we care about it should be more, even more spread out, right? This is T3. So if we wait long enough, this is going to spread a lot. So that's the type of um, um, solution you would expect to see when you have pulse of injection of a tracer. Now, just may very briefly mention the characteristic time. Um, the, there are several times we think it's important, right? Why is residence time? This is directly related to how fast the flow goes and how long it actually stays in this column, how long this 
trees are actually staying in this column. So um, this is we call tau A is equal to porosity uh, times the length over mu. Or you can just say L over V. This is residence time. Another time is how long uh, how long it takes for the dispersion process to 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 uniform the whole um, concentration field. This is what we call tau d. It related to, to dispersion, so it's l square divided by d. Which you can almost think about this is like how if it's a uh, not open system, it would be the time, how long it takes for diffusion to go through, to, to uniform, to homogenize the whole concentration field. And then a lot of time we, de we define this packing number is tau d over tau a. So it's a relative between these two time scale or the speed of, or the rate of flow versus the rate of dispersion. And this should have a unit of L U phi D H. This is a dimension uh, dimensionless number. Okay, so these times will be determining like how fast you you will realize these are kind of grouping dimensionless numbers, the packing number will determine the relative importance of dispersion versus advection. Which in the homework I asked you to do some exercise under different conditions with different packing numbers.